No masking fluid, no problem. In this video, you see two ways for painting watercolor landscapes without masking fluid using a birthday candle and a white acrylic pen. Hello, hello, my name is Adelheid and I'm a trained art teacher. And if you want, I'm your personal art teacher. So let's start. In this video, you see two different landscapes that we paint on one sheet of watercolor paper. Applies. I use an ordinary birthday candle and don't worry about the color. It is almost transparent looking on the paper. I use a sharpener and now I can use it like a pencil. I use my washi tape as a stencil. I place it about one and a half centimeters from the top on the right hand side where I want to have my sun later in the landscape. T. Don't use a soft pencil for drawing like the B pencils. Use an H pencil. Now I fill in the circle and I use the candle like a pencil. I work here very carefully and I try, I try not to touch the pencil line with the candle. To remove the little wax flakes, I use a dry brush. Don't use your fingers or the paraffin will melt because of the warmth of your fingers and you will have wax stains on the paper. I carefully erase the pencil line with the tip of my thumbnail. I scratch a little bit of the wax or I use a scalpel to remove the wax. These are the watercolors I'm using today. I use a watercolor paper 300 gram, 100% cotton, and I've already prepared the paper with masking tape. Maybe you ask yourself now, why do I use wax instead of masking fluid? The space covered by the wax can't absorb color, and so um, the space stays white. This is a very old school watercolor technique but I think it's really important to know it and it still works. So the first step is to wet the paper. I like to use a big brush and to use a lot of water and I always make sure that I cover all the corners. I use cadmium yellow and a lot of water and, and I apply the first layer of color and I start with the top. I work fast and there is no pressure on the brush. And very important tip is don't work up and down. Always work from left to right and from right to left. Always horizontal brush strokes. The next color is chromium yellow hue deep. I place it about 10 centimeters on the, the top and then I work my way from left to right and then I work my way up to the lighter color to blend the colors together. To make the background more intense I use more of the chromium yellow. Now I apply a second layer because I want the colors more intense. Sorry for the funny sounds in the background. That's my dog playing with his Kong toy. He loves it. And I also add more of the chromium yellow and work my way up and try to blend it together nicely. Before I apply the next color, I make sure that the paper is wet and I apply a little of water and then I use the I use turquoise blue with a lot of water and I make a very light wash. Then I apply it under the yellow and I make horizontal brush strokes and working my way. So here comes the color theory and if I mix blue and yellow I get green but I want a gradient color mix between yellow and blue and so I have to be very careful not to um, mix it too much to get this greenish color. At the bottom line I add cobalt green dark and I blend the colors together by making horizontal brush strokes and 
working my way up. Now I let the paper completely dry. Psst, I always use a hairdryer because I'm so impatient. And now I'm applying the second layer. The difference here is that I don't wet the paper. I apply the color directly on the first layer. The more layers we apply of color, the better we can see the sun and the sun comes forward. Now comes a part that is a little bit difficult. I apply the turquoise and I work it up into the yellow and there will be a little of color mix and it becomes greenish but I don't blend the colors too intense and so it becomes a nice gradient background. And here you can see it is becoming a little bit of greenish the green is not too intense and I don't worry about it. Now I apply the green and work my way up into the turquoise. And I apply a lot of green because when the color dries it appears much brighter and I want an intense look so I have to apply really a lot of color. To darken the green at the bottom, I mix a little of indigo with the green and I apply it at the bottom of the landscape background. Background landscape. And I blend it with horizontal brush strokes. And now comes a really fun part. I make little brush strokes or uh, little dots and I paint the dot into the yellow and into the uh, turquoise bluish greenish background and that should be later represent um, trees or bushes that are very far away and that appear blurry because of the color perspective you know all things that we um, perceive far away they look grayish bluish and are very blurry so we use we use this in art to to create the illusion of depth that's such a difficult word for me sorry now i use a little piece of paper towel and i clean the sun from the little color spots that are on the sun and I dip it also on the yellow background to create to create clouds and here the trick is to use a kind of diagonal angle. Now it's time to let the background dry again or now I change my brush and I use a round brush size 10 that's my all-time favorite brush. I apply a light green wash over the green area and now you can see that we create a horizontal line and this layer becomes our middle ground or mid ground. Now I use a, a darker green mix um, with more color and I apply it in, in horizontal brush strokes. I use the same mix to draw a vertical line and then I use my, my brush and I make kind of zigzag brush strokes and we paint the trees in the background and I paint them in different sizes that also creates the illusion of depth and you sometimes I, I lift the brush a little bit and I only work with the tip of my brush and I make 
kind of horizontal zigzag lines. And I always try to leave a little bit of space in between where the background shines through, so the illusion works better. When I've got the feeling that it is too that it is too light, I apply little dots of color and then blend it with the brush. I really love this watercolor paper, but sometimes it is a little bit hard to, to manage because it has a very good lifting effect for, for the color. And so sometimes the, the color lifts too much and creates some water stains that are here not wanted <laughs> with this technique. Okay, now we work our way into the front and I check that the paper is dry and then I can go on. I draw a vertical line, then I make kind of horizontal brush strokes and this time the tree appears already darker. That means I used more color pigment. I place the, the trees uh, in front of each other and in different sizes. Okay, now comes the, the star of our landscape. I draw the really dark vertical line and you can see there are little spots but uh, they don't matter. And now I create with this kind of diagonal brush strokes the form of our tree. With each brush stroke I try to make the line a little bit longer and then draw little lines to the bottom. And I paint the branches all the way down the stem. And then I let the branches dry and add a second layer of branches and the color mix for this is darker again and I darken it by adding indigo. And now the trees in the background are dry and now I apply another tree. But always make sure that the color mix is darker than the one you used before. And I always can add more color as long as the color is dry in the background. And I can blend it with my brush. Here with the big tree there are some branches that appear to light and I can add more accents by adding dark, darker branches and creating the illusion of depth. And now I want to create some shadow on the ground that is caused by the sun and I use a little bit of indigo and I draw it at the bottom of the tree in a kind of diagonal horizontal lines and, and I try to blend the shadow into the background. Here I apply some brush strokes at the bottom to make it darker. And now it's time for the next landscape. I draw I already draw a pencil line about three centimeters from the bottom and then I use the birthday candle and I follow the pencil line and I cover the line with wax. The next step is to wet the paper using the big brush and also apply it at the bottom and make sure that I cover all the edges 
and where the masking tape meets the paper. Then I use the bluish turquoise mix and apply a very thin layer. And I work my way down using horizontal brush strokes. And here I try to work fast. And the more I go downwards, the lighter the color appears or becomes because the color mixes with the water. Please make sure that you always emphasize the, the top and there can add more, more color to make it more intense. Now I use Perline Maroon or Dunkelrot or Rouge Fonds, Rosso Sucro. Hmm. I'm not applying the red color directly under the bluish color. I try to let a little bit of space and then work my way up to blend them together. I really love this color because it's so intense and so bright and when it dries it really uh, glows in the background. Now I dip my brush into the water and then I work my way downwards to the pencil line and I cover the whole area until I reach the bottom. And you can see that the pencil line or the wax line really appears now and this line will be later uh, will be very important and it's also our horizontal line. Now I add more of this perylene maroon and the color is wet enough so it is really easy to blend it together and now I dip it into the blue in little brush strokes and now with these little brush strokes I create the effect of clouds. I don't cover the whole heaven or background with with these little brush strokes. I try to keep it very balanced. And from the red background I can dry my brush on a on an old paper towel and then lift the color and the underground appears lighter and that will create the illusion of clouds. Red and blue become violet and then we have this wonderful little violet clouds or cloud effects. And now again it's time to let everything dry and when the background is dried I apply a mix of the Perlin maroon with a little bit of indigo and I draw the second layer and this should later be our first mountain in the background. I hold my brush kind of vertical and with the tip I make little upward strokes and this should create the illusion of little trees on, on the mountain. Now I add a little bit of indigo and to create shadow. On the dry mountain layer I apply the next layer and each layer becomes darker.
and then I add the trees and with my dry brush I remove some of the color to lighten the areas. Now we paint the last mountain layer and this layer is really dark and to the indigo parallel maroon mix I added a little bit bum, bum, bum. Who is this? of the permanent carmine. Now I mix this color with a lot of water and I make short horizontal brush strokes and sometimes I use the whole brush, that means I really press the, the brush on the, on the paper and so the tip of the brush gets wider and I get the thicker brush strokes or sometimes I just use the tip of my brush and so I can control my brush strokes and apply the lines that should create the effect of water. Then I change to the smaller brush and here I added more indigo to the color mix to make it more bluish and again I apply these little brush strokes and try not to cover the whole area to, to make this little wave, wavy effect on the water. And it's really up to you how many lines you add or how you intense you want the effect. And if you look at the background, you see that the background has now dried, also the mountains, and they appear very light. And the color has spread it really crazy. And so I have the problem that it did not turn out the way I wanted. This happens a lot really believe me and there are some tricks we can do to fix this painting problems and I use a very light wash of red and indigo and I make these little brush strokes that should create the effect of, of trees and later we add another layer of color on the whole mountains and so we can layer the color and create a nice effect and some of the color underneath will shine through. And now I'll let the color dry. And, and in the meantime, we work on the background. I take my pencil and I draw a half moon shape or a circle that is not closed and I use the acrylic pen and I cover the line with the acrylic white and the trick here is not to, to close the circle and also not to cover the whole area in the circle with the white color and just focus on the right hand side and add a little the white acrylic color will dry not very intensely in a bright white shade. It really blends into the background and we have the effect of, of the moon that is 
shining between the mountains and that is not too too bright and too intensive and looks too fake and then I can paint little dots to to paint stars And now we focus on the mountains and paint a darker wash of color over the first layer and cover the whole mountains with the new color mix. And I added more indigo to make the color mix darker. And then I use the same color mix to emphasize the first mountain that is closest to the viewer. And with the same color mix I add another thin lines on underwater. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and that it is helpful for you and that I explain the steps that way that you can recreate this at home and if there is any topic you want me to explain it or to to make a video on it because you have questions or you think that it is difficult please let me know and write it in the comment section below and I hope I can help you. Now it's time to remove the tape and to look at the picture and and I think that I will add another layer of color on the last mountain because I think the, the contrast of the dark mountains in the, in the front and of the light mountain in the background is too strong. And the last step is to take the acrylic pen and to draw little lines or little dots over the horizontal line to create the lights of houses or a little village and I also paint some white dots on the mountains to, to create the effect that there are little houses and the lights are on and I can emphasize some of the lights more by making bigger dots that will look brighter and I don't cover the whole area with the dots. I kind of um, make little clusters of white dots. I really love the background of the second landscape with the red bluish background and the mountain and the, 
the clouds. So bye bye from Austria and don't forget to watch my other videos. Or you get detention because I'm a real teacher. <laughs>